So ju just to give you a, a very brief background, uh, why we are reading today uh, a passage from the book of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srila Maharaj, uh, a god brother of Srila Prabhupada and a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta. Right? Yeah. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And he has compiled beautiful books, very rustic, I would say. I think many of us maybe remember in their early days of their bhakti journey, they also came across uh, Shridhar Maharaj's book, like The Golden Volcano, or this book, which in German is uh, Liebevolle, Liebevolle Suche nach dem Verlorenen Diener, which in English would translate the loving, love, heart loving search for the lost servant. Lost servant. Sorry? Long lost servant. For the long lost servant, or Raguna Riyasi. And yesterday we were um, reading a, a passage from it. Actually, our dear Udav brother is here. And our Ragunath, of course. So we were reading uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yesterday afternoon. And it was so inspiring that Gurudev, you know, you know, when Gurudev gets inspired, then it only, uh, you know, the dam breaks and it just pours from his heart. And so he wanted that this should, this nectar should also be shared with uh, all of you. So if you allow me, uh, I'll, uh, I'll read. And uh, it's in German. So I have to then translate it back to my broken English, from my broken German to my broken English. <laughs> so sorry for that. If any, any mistake happens here on my side. Yes, so this one, um, this is actually the last chapter of this book. And uh, one says that the conclusion is written in the last chapter, right? Like often we hear that, that a book contains the summary, the conclusion in the last chapter. So we read this last chapter, which is called The Service to Sri Radha. Yeah. Once the Divan from Bharatpur which is like a very uh, rich personality king, king. king came with his family to the most sacred places of all, Sri Radha Kund, the sacred pond of Srimati Radharani. With all his family, he circumambulated Radha Kund. All of them, through them, onto the ground, the arms stretched out, and they gave their obeisances. Every time they used to give dandavats, they used to mark the place where their fingertips had touched the earth. It's the dandavat parikam, which many of us have not done. Yeah. Um, then, they slowly, slowly raised themselves and made the step to that mark. And again, they did complete Dandavat on the ground. In this way, they brought their reverence and their great awe to expression. And in this way, they circumambulated the entire Radha Kunda. When Paramananda Prabhu, a very close disciple of our Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when our Paramananda Prabhu saw such deep devotion, he told in confidence to Prabhupada that the king and his family have great respect for Radharani, they must have great respect for Radharani because they are doing parikram of Radha Then Prabhupada 
Prabhupada in this is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He is Prabhupada, mentioned here as Prabhupada. Then Prabhupada replied, the way to view Radha Kund and Radha Rani, their way is different than ours. They recognize Krishna and worship him. And because Radha Rani is the dearmost of Krishna, they also find some kind of reveration for Radha Kund. But our view is exactly the opposite. For us, it's all about Radha Rani. And only because Krishna desires her, we have a connection to him. Quote by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. That was his saying. Therefore, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas only know Radha Rani. It's for them, for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, it's exclusively about her, about her duties, her desires. They are ready to serve her in any way. And they cannot imagine any seva, any service without her. This is the highest achievement of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. This is the particularly landmark of Mahaprabhu school. And it was crystallized by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami in his Vilapa Kusumanjali. Here comes now verse number 102 from Vilapa Kusumanjali. Ashabharair Amrita Sindhu Maya Tanta Chet Kalo Maya Tigamita Kila Sampratam Hi Vam Chet Pipa Mai Vidya Shinaiva Kime Ganai Brajinacha Vararuru Bakhi Bakarin Napi. This verse is a prayer that is directly addressed to Radharani. It expresses a particular way of hope, which is full of love and is very soothing, which can be compared with a limitless ocean of nectar. Sri Raghunath Goswami says, it's a kind of hope which keeps me alive and which nourishes my existence. With this hope, I will manage to kind of pass my days. I'm dragging my life through this very shallow life. This nectarian ocean of hope is attracting me and it's pulling me towards it and it's sustaining my very life. <coughs> but my patience is now at an end. I can't tolerate it any longer. I cannot wait any longer. If you now, in this very moment, show your mercy to me, Sri Radha, if you now don't show your mercy to me, Sri Radha, then I am mm. lost. I will lose all my will to live forever. I don't have the wish to continue my life. Everything will be in vain. Without your mercy, I cannot live any moment longer. And Vrindavan, which is more dear to me than my own life, I get disgusted by it. It hurts me. It's like a thorn inside my skin. 
And what should I talk about? All the other things. Even Krishna despises me. It is a shaming to utter such words. But unless you take me into the confidential circle of the yours, I can't even feel any love for Krishna. Unless you don't take, unless you take me into your confidential circle of the ones which are yours, I cannot even feel any love for Krishna. This is the prayer of Srila Raghunath Das. When Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Srila Prabhupada started to explain this verse, his whole appearance started to change. He was filled with emotions. His face was looking like a phantom, pale. In this verse, Sri Raghunatha Goswami takes a very big risk while saying, O oh Radhe, if I don't receive your mercy, I don't want anything else. I want you, you only. And I'm not capable in my life to have an independent relationship with anyone else but you, but exclusively you. First you have to come, then others. Without you, I cannot even think to have a particular relationship to Krishna. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj has described that without Radharani's company, Krishna is not beautiful. Everything is relative, means everything is dependent. A teacher needs his disciples and the disciples need their teacher. Though Krishna is the relisher, he totally depends from those he relishes the most, Srimati Radharani. Both condition each other. One cannot live separate from the other. As the one who is relished, also Radharani, is totally dependent from the relisher, Krishna. Radharani is saying, Alas, my faith is lost forever because I have surrendered to you. I have sold myself to many things. When I hear... Mm. Still there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you still able to hear? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Gopika. I have sold myself to so many things, Radharani is saying. When I heard the flute, I surrendered to the music, to the song of the flute. When I heard the name, Krishna's, I have surrendered myself to the sound of this name. And when I saw a beautiful image of Krishna, I have surrendered myself completely to this image.
Tomorrow they will come for Prashad. Sorry, we we continue. Just uh, some some guests came, so. I have surrendered myself to three things completely. I've sold myself without the opportunity to find any luck or peace in my life. Alas, if I had only surrendered myself to one, then I still would have the chance to find some peace. But I have given myself to these three things. I have no hope. When I saw the image of Krishna, I couldn't hold my, myself anymore. I could not stop to approach to this beautiful image and I have dedicated myself totally to it. The name Krishna has totally taken me, captured me, and has bought me. And the very loving sound of the flute has also led me to the utmost devotion. So now where can I find any peace in my life? Where can I hope for any peace in my life? It is impossible, my girlfriends. Radharani at this point did not know that the source of Krishna's flute and is non-different for his, from his name and his beauty. Would she have known how these three aspects go together? It would have been possible for her to find peace. But it is difficult to understand this principle of unity. How is it possible that the sound of Krishna's flute, the sound of his name and the image of his form are, could be different, any different from him. Idealism is the answer. In Hegel's words, ideal realism, the absolute idea cannot be cast away as something abstract. It is much more the source of all existence. There is reality, but she is the reality. It is ideal reality, ideal realism. And the base, the foundation of reality of Vrindavan has been named by Nityananda Baladeva. Nitai Karuna Hobe, Varaja Radha Krishna Hobe, Daharo Nitai Charana Dukhani. After Bhakti Vinod Thakur has described the position of Radharani in his compilation, Sharanagati, he said, I want to serve those who already carry the service 
of Radharani in their hearts. I want to serve those. I want to serve the dust on the feet of those whose only treasure is the service to Srimati Radharani. I want to fall down in front of them and I want to take the dust of their holy feet. If you point your thinking totally towards the service of Srimati, then if you, if you don't point your thinking totally towards the service of Radharani, then all your attempts to serve Krishna are in vain. If you don't point your thinking totally towards the service of Radharani, then all your attempts to serve Krishna are in vain. If you cannot reach honesty in your service to Radharani, then all the efforts for Krishna are destructive. <laughs> we cannot imagine the sun without heat. Similarly, we cannot imagine God without his energy. Therefore, imagining Krishna without Srimati Radharani is not possible. We cannot acquire knowledge about Mohan without Radha. She is Mohan's other half. In Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's language, the dominant half. She represents the complete surrendered loving service in its totality because the depth and the extension of her service to Krishna is without comparison. There are many examples of chest and very noble ladies in the old stories of the Puranas. Sachi, the faithful wife of Indra, Sati, who is the wife of Lord Shiva, Lakshmi Devi, who is the goddess of fortune, Satya Bhama, who is Krishna's wife in Dwarka, Rukmani, the first queen of Krishna in Dwarka, and also Chandravali, who is the opponent of Radharani. They all represent different aspects of Radharani. They all come from this primeval energy, the principal energy, which is known as Radha. The name Radha comes from the word Aradhana. Someone who can serve and worship. Someone who brings up respect. Someone who gives respect and loves Krishna dearly. Someone who brings, who does loving devotional service. All these other women are famous for their purity and chastity, but they're only partial representations of Radharani. If we cast a glance on the scriptures and examine the positions of all these virtuous ladies, we will understand that the source of all their purity and devotion is Srimati Radharani. She is the source, she is the well of devotion. 
And therefore, Bhakti Vinoda is saying, I bow down and I take the dust of the feet of those who are who are whose only treasure is the service to Radharani, whose only the only treasure they have is the service to Radharani. I take the dust of their lotus feet. Yeah. I don't desire anything else. Who understands this and with an honest heart travels on this journey, on this path, that person can call himself extremely lucky. It is the ideal of a person which elevates that person, not the material um, property of that person. The one who, who, who has the highest ideal is truly rich. The highest ideal is the most precious which we can possess. And less precious things have to be discarded, they have to be thrown away. If we point our efforts very clearly, and if we want to save ourselves from uh, Mühe, yeah, if we want to uh, save us from a uh, uh, useless endeavor. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to show us this highest ideal, the path of divine love. And we find divine love to God in its deepest form, in the life and teachings, in his life, in Mahaprabhu's life, and his teachings about the Srimad Bhagavatam. The entire Srimad Bhagavatam is an expression of that ideal divine love, which finds its utmost expression in Srimati Radharani. The Srimad Bhagavatam is singing about the loving love affairs and it's praising these loving affairs between Radha and Shah Sundar. The Vedas and other mm -hmm. Puranas are not so clear about these confidential pastimes, but we get an experience of these glorious pastimes of Radha and Shamsundar in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Goswamis have brought this the devotion of Radharani, they have made it more clear to us in their scriptures and writings. In Rupa Goswami's book, Padyavali, she says, my Lord, Brother Rani says, my Lord, people say, I have a bad reputation because I am with you. But I actually don't feel any uh, repent in my heart. But what really worries me is the fact that I have completely given myself to you. Wow. People say everywhere that I am connected with you in a non-permissive way. It's not allowed. But what I am sorry about is that I cannot give myself fully to you. I feel that I cannot serve you in the right manner. This is the only sorrow of my heart. It's Radharani saying it. The ecstasy of divine love is more 
increasing in separation. Once Krishna was playing with his friends, the Gopas, in the pasture grounds of Vrindavan, suddenly he felt a very deep pain of separation from Srimati. He then sent his best friend, Subal, to Radharani. He told Subal, go to my Radha and bring her here. I cannot live without her. I suddenly have such a strong desire for her company that I cannot bear it anymore. Bring her, somehow bring her here. Subal replies, how should that work? How can I bring her in daylight into the forest? But Krishna insisted, just do it. <laughs> Subal thought, thinks, hmm, what should I do now? Subal is very close with the family of Radharani's husband. He's very close, has a very close relationship. So he goes to the house of Radharani. And he tells to her girlfriends, Are, Shyam Sundar, he's not capable to stay any longer in separation from her. He wants her to be with him. And he's getting totally mad about it. Somehow you have to arrange that they can meet. Subal is telling to Radharani's girlfriends, Kurudev, mm -hmm. that they have to arrange somehow. The gopis are saying, how should that go? How should we do that? Then Subal explains them that Shamsundar is somewhere waiting in the forest. So they start scheming. Subal is a very attractive, young, beautiful looking boy who looks very similar to Radharani. Therefore, he takes Radharani's clothes and puts them on him. And Radharani puts on Subal's Gopa, cowherd boy clothes. <laughs> now, when the family sees Radharani, they saw her in Subal's clothes, they told, hey, Subal, what are you doing here? Now Radharani, dressed as Subal, replies, Oh, you know, there's a little baby cub, and the mother is looking and crying for her. Therefore, I was searching, and I came here. <laughs> yeah. So then the people give Radharani the cub, and she carries that little baby cub on her chest into the forest. So Radharani dressed as Subal, while Subal in the, in the clothes of Radharani sits in her room and Radharani is on her way to the forest. Radharani was told and that- Nobody identified Radhika. Radhika. So she could scarf small baby that nobody dressed can hide. Oh, <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> because her breast is beautiful. To hide the breast, she could scarf the baby. Oh. Uh, you see, this Gaudiya Vaishnav, they write, but meaning you have to find out. Mm. That is Parkia. You have to think more deep than it will create. The girlfriends in Suba had told Radharani where Krishna is hiding in the forest. So she started to walk there and was looking for him. Mm -hmm. Finally, she sees him and she... Radha, 
finally she sees him and yeah. she walks dressed in Subha's clothes towards him. Sham Sundar is totally perplexed. He's not understanding that Radharani is coming. He thinks Subha has come, has returned. And he says, oh, Subha, you're coming without her? You could not manage to bring her here? Radharani is getting a taste of this fun Leela. And she says, no, it was not possible to bring her here during daylight. Krishna replied, what should I do now? I cannot, uh, I cannot tolerate my life anymore like this. Then Radharani replies, oh, if that's so, then I can go to Chandravali and I bring her. No, 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 says Sham. Yogurt cannot quench the thirst for milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Okay. Krishna says, no, no, brother Ani, as dressed like Subha says, oh, if you, I can bring Chandravali to you. And then Krishna is saying, no, 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 no. Yogurt cannot quench or still the thirst for milk. Wow. It's impossible. <laughs> Krishna becomes so pale out of disappointment. In this moment, Radharani embraces him and says, my Lord, can't you recognize your maid? Then Krishna becomes in full ecstasy. Uh, two pages? Yeah. Though the amorous pastimes of Radha and Govinda are mentioned in the scriptures, these are very elevated subjects. They can actually not be expressed in words. But we are often in this uh, uh, Zwangslage, tension, Zwangslage, difficult. We are often in this difficulty to talk about them because the ideal of divine love, how it has been explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam, is the highest goal in our lives. Of course, Shukadev Goswami and Mahaprabhu have helped us in a certain way <laughs> to establish the dignity of these teachings, of the, which says that love is above knowledge. Wow. Love is above knowledge. That's, that's what uh, it's written here, Gurudev. This is in this book saying love is above knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Not only you. <laughs> Everyone has to admit that Shukadev Goswami is on the highest stage of knowledge which a scholar can ever attain. He has been appreciated as the highest authority of all scholars. When Sukadev Goswami introduced the teachings of divine love, that divine love, when Sukadev Goswami introduced that divine love stands above all, then all the other scholars had to accept it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu proved to the scholars that his intelligence and education was above all others. When Mahaprabhu came with this teaching of divine love, it was for ordinary people much easier to accept them as the highest goal and as the way to the divine. 
Oh, love is the way good and love is the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, See, right, huh? yes. Yeah. When <laughs> when Mahaprabhu <coughs> introduced the teaching that of divine love, it became easier for ordinary people to accept that the highest ideal, divine love and the way to the divine, it made it easier for them to accept that the highest ideal is love and the way is also love. Really? <laughs> it's written here. But... <laughs> Therefore, Vasudev Gosh says, Yadi Gorna Hoyte Tavi, he Hoyta Keman and Hoyta Gorna Hoyto Keman Hoyto Keman Daritam Dere. They mean, but he is spiritual. But Keman Daritam Dere Radha also Mahima without realization of my spiritual body. How I can understand Radha Rasma. A premier Rasasima, limitation of the love, highest love, how it moves. Jagate Janatoke, who am going to say about this divine personal confidential part? This is the mercy of God. What is happening? What's the question? What's the question? How could we then tolerate this life? How could we even, how can we even live on? What he has given us, the essence of life, the taste, the magic of life, without those, so we believe it is impossible for someone to live in this world. Such an important thing was discovered by Goranga. If Goranga wouldn't have come, how could we how could we then live? It is not possible to live without divine love, which is so sacred and is so auspicious. How would we know without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who Radharani in this world of divine love? How would we know without <coughs> Mahaprabhu that Radharani stands above all in the realm of divine love? Everything we have received from him and now life is worth to be lived. Otherwise, it would be suicidal to live. Mm -hmm. The path to come closer to her is now to serve is the path in mm -hmm. order to come closer to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the path to come closer to her is to serve those who are already serving Radharani. Yeah. So if we serve the servants of the servants, then we can be assured to get the mercy of Krishna. Yeah. If someone any in any way 
achieve somehow to get into the group of Radharani servants, his future is guaranteed. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> Only by the mercy of the Vaishnava can trust him. You see, our acharyas are talking this, that I want to share. You cannot say that Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinodhaku, and uh, Siddhar Maharaj, Prabhupada is giving love and respect like a Siksha Guru to me. I listen to that. Any problem comes, he go to discuss Prabhupada, the Swami Maharaj. <coughs> so this is in beginning also Manjari how he is mentioned. Now it comes back. Not you back. see it. Hmm. it. Gets better, Guru. More better. It's the conclusion of the book. So the conclusion of the book. Within the group of Radharani servants, we aspire to be Rupa Nuga, followers of Sri Rupa. <laughs> and the followers of Sri Rupa will do everything to please Sri Rupa, like she is, like he is doing everything to please <coughs> Lalita. Mm -hmm. In this way, through Rupa Goswami, our devotional service will go up to the highest stage, to the highest level, and we will find the highest treasure there. Not even our relationship to Radharani or Lalita Devi is the highest goal in life, but the highest aspiration is to serve Rupa Nuga Sampradaya. This means the highest achievement is connected mm -hmm. with Sri Rupa. Radha Dasyam has been declared as the highest achievable goal. Why? Because Rasa if it's in a quantity within um, Rasta in quantity, quality and quantity, quality and quantity like Radharani is getting it, receiving it from Krishna, is nowhere else to find. Because Rasa in the quality and quantity, like Radharani is receiving it from Krishna is nowhere to find. So if you are coming straight behind Radharani, you will be permitted not only to get the highest quantity, but also the highest quality of rasa to be tasted. Yeah. You will taste this. <laughs> this is rasa. Rasa. No other person can receive such a high rasa from Krishna. The most powerful rasa in the highest condensity comes direct from Krishna. He gives himself totally in the most deepest way. So if you are in the group of Sri Rupa, you can also taste from this rasa. In Radharani's uh, team group, grown-up Sakis do not dare to enter the Kunja and to serve them when Radha and Krishna are enjoying their amorous pastime in a solitary bower. But the young girls, the manjaris, wow. are sent there. You see? Yeah. Last page of the book, by the way. Yeah. 
the leader of that young girls group can enter when Radha and Govinda are in very close, intimate embrace. Even the Sakis don't dare to go in because they're afraid to disturb them. Yeah. But Rupa Manjari and the other Manjaris can go inside because of their tender age. And loyalty of the Radha. This form of Rasa, which one cannot even relish through the Sakis, can only be relished through the Manjaris. Bhakti Vino Thakur. That is why only Manjari. What not Radhis? Why? Can this rasa mm. cannot be relished through the not even relished through the sakis, but only through the manjuris. To receive that rasa only through the manjuris. Mm. Bhakti Vinoda Thakur is praying to get permission to enter that kunja. He possesses such a high spiritual aspiration. He's saying, Rupa Nuga Hoite Seidoi. He's running, he's running to find, to be allowed to enter the group of Rupa, which can give us such beautiful things to relish. And Prabhupada Saraswati has described what are the efforts to understand all this? Yata yata gora padara vinde vindeta bhakti krita punya rashi tata tasho tatos tarapati hridaya akshamat radha padam bhoja sudham burashi. According to the level you surrender yourself to the ah. lotus feet of Sri Guranga. Level of surrender. How much I took surrender. That much we get. And we practice from Gurudev. How much I surrender to Gurudev, I will receive that. It's not easy to surrender. Circumstances will not make you to surrender. How much level you surrender, that you will see. Yeah. And this goes not only to do that, it goes to Radharani, to Gauranga. Um, this, this practice to go from base. According to the level, you will surrender to the lotus feet of Sri Guranga. Accordingly, you will get a secure position in the service of Radha and Guruji. Don't try to directly approach Radha and If you do that, you will be in trouble. But the lotus feet state of Sri Goranga will carry you there. In my Sanskrit poetry for Bhakti Vinod Thakur, I have described all these points. But Sri Mahaprabhu, when he ascended, uh, descended to this earth, what he has approved was only was only known to Swarup Damodar in its entirety. It was then worshipped by Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami together with his followers who served him. Raghunath Das Goswami has tasted this beauty totally and he has enriched it with his own realizations and understanding. And Jiva Goswami has supported and protected it in, through citing from different scriptures. 
So this taste for this divine reality, the divine truth, even Brahma, Shiva, and Uddhav are aspiring this as the highest goal. What is this beautiful truth? Sri Radha Pada Sevana. Service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. The highest nectar in our life is the service to Srimati Radharani. This is so beautiful. O Bhaktivino Thakur, you are my master. It is only in your power to allow me that I can receive her mercy. It's only possible for you to grant me this highest gift which was ever known to the world. You can possess me, O Bhakti Vinoda Thakur. Be merciful, be kind, and give me your mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, my compassionate and loving Lord, has come to look for his lost servants and to, to gift them with the highest ideal of divine love. Gaura Hari Mandarani. Is okay. You like it? Yeah, okay. Just saying yes, good. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Yeah. The <laughs> Yeah. 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 Now you say some Gauranga, that is forty half an hour, one hour, forty five minutes left. Yeah. Oh good. It was very <laughs> inspiring to listen to that. So I share oh. my it was so good. It's so amazing, Guru. Yeah. Everything was focused in these few pages. All Siddhanta, all Tattva, Gaudiya Vaishnava, Tattva. Not and it's done. all so... You have to go? I, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, it's done, done. Okay. Essence. Yeah. Of Gaudiya Vaishnava. Yes. And it's very clearly it's showing how all Gaudiya Vaishnavas are in the same line. There is no contradictions because they are all Radha Dasis, Manjaris. And if we see some contradictions in their statements, it means that we don't understand properly their statements. Yeah. So, what to say? person like me <laughs> cannot say anything. So many beautiful points which Gurudev is always repeating and emphasizing and repeating and emphasizing to infuse in our hearts so we can see we can hear really such a great jewels are our beautiful acharyas and this is most favorable sangha which we really need. And to put all their vanis deeply in our heart so they, they can grow and grow and grow finally to reach the 
Brother Rani's feet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yes. You share something for today what you do. There is a time. I yes. want to share or ask others question yes. answer. Gorwani. Okay, who's that? All are busy. <laughs> yeah. is there. She's translating. My God. <laughs> yes. Suniti is there. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I can only say one thing that um, by your mercy, Gurudev, I have learned how to open my ears so that uh, I can feel, really, I mean, it, it sounds crazy, but I feel that the Radha Dasyam uh, of is everywhere somehow in the words of our great uh, teachers. And that it is, uh, I feel it's such a great blessing that um, before I could not feel it. I could not. I was, I was trying to feel it. I was trying to, to listen, but I did not know so deeply about this feeling of Radha Dasi. And um, now by your grace, good if, and by your grace of all our Rasika Vaishnavas that I can really listen and I can feel it and I maybe I'm not perfect. That is no question because who is perfect? But there's this drop of, of mercy and the drop of eagerness to come closer and to to live in these feelings that uh, that Sridhar Maharaj is also sharing with us. He comes from this place platform and maybe they don't always say radha 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 but they call it love or ladini shakti or anangamantari so it's all connected and then because this is our gaudiya only what what is written is no meaning. Behind that is a meaning. I say Srimad Bhagavad keeps to read. And I will show you the behind meaning of Srimad Bhagavad. Mm. The Rahasya. Rahasya. There is a story. Why story is there? To bring to the past hand. To, you have to move in a story to practice, to be mind, to be practiced, to be live in the story of the kings and how he got after that, what is his realization and connection, he got that position what he was doing sadhana and how he get it. Everything is very detailed and all in his story because that you move with that story to understand, to live with the Radha Krishna pastime. You can move, your mind can move it. And the meaning of behind is also is hidden there. <coughs> so 
there was a question, Guru. Somebody is questioning um, from the text why uh, it. Opinat, can you read this? Uh, it's in the chat. Yeah, yeah it's um, uh, it's from Goravani Raja Sundari. Uh, what we were reading now that we should not try to serve directly Radha Mohan. Maybe someone can explain this. Thank you. From Raja Sundari. Directness. Okay. <coughs> Here mentioned about uh, Siddhar Maharaj said to go through Mahaprabhu. Yes. If I am not very close to Mahaprabhu, then associate of Mahaprabhu. If I am not associated with Mahaprabhu, not very knowledge I have, then why by my spiritual master, who knows all details, slowly it will reveal to me. Not direct. We have to go through someone who has the realization and that he can explain us. That is the meaning. Direct. We can do mistakes, but when I go through my God brother, God sister, my spiritual master, in living in the association, help us to grow for that. That is the not going direct, go through association. Saying also, if we try to go direct, then we will come become in trouble. Trouble. What kind of trouble? Trouble means I have to go right. I will go wrong. Uh, wrong. I go to the Germany, and I go want not to go want to go to highway. I want to go different lane back village lane. Then we need some. In, in navigation, also navigator will show you some hidden path. So it's a hidden path. Hidden path, you need the person who knows about that. Then he can show you. If not, then every five minutes stop car and ask to others. You can reach in one hour, you will reach two hours. Or you lost. will not be there. You can get lost. Lost also. Mm -hmm. Like in no. like a journey. <laughs> easy to lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to go in a hidden path, it's easy to lose. Highway, auto one, not easy to lose. <laughs> By the bhakti, there is no loss. But Raga bhakti is a hidden part of the bhakti. It's possible without associate to go on. And if you are with Chaitanya or Nithai, then you are already with your Guru there. This is understood. He bring you up to here. Mm -hmm. So his identity fact is there that Guru Kripa bring you to Chaitanya Nithai. And to me also, if I talk on Manjiri means Guru Kripa bring me there. I cannot do alone myself. I know only material vision, material circumstances, material things, but the spiritual things, no idea. And this idea, who has this idea, he can give it the idea.
कर्तकूर आप ऑल गौड़िया ब्लाइंड गौड़िया वैष्णव फॉलोअर ऑफ चैतन्य नित्यानंद पंचतत्व इस रूपानुगा एंड रूपानुगा में प्रैक्टिकली ये मंजरी तू सब पूरा था क्यों यार इस नॉट ओनली बाबा जी लाइन इस और भक्ति से दांता लाइन भक्ति बनोट लाइन और किसों दास बाबा जी लाइन सिद्धर महाराज He is standing. He is a perfect. He is the direct disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta. Senior most. There. Should I say what I think? Yeah. Right at now. Yeah. फीडबैक I just turned it off. Oh, okay. Nadi Raghe, you maybe saw Nadi that Nadi. when you maybe saw that when Popping Out mentioned Hegel, he laughed a little bit to the side. It's because some of you know that I spent fifteen years of my life writing a book about Hegel. And now tonight, I found the real use for it, and I wanted to say what that was. What uh, Thakur Maharaj said was that there was an ideal, real problem in the Bhakti philosophy, and what he meant by this was that we have a tendency of seeing the world divided in two, two bits: the ideal. And reality, so ideas, transcendental ideas, and reality. And so, when we think about bhakti in this way, we have a tendency to think that divine love is something far away and detached from reality. But what it, in effect, is when we're finding the ideal, we're discovering reality itself. So, the divine love is not just something far away and abstract. It's the most intense and present form of uh, reality itself. It's the real. It's what's really, really real. Uh, again, you know. again, again, no. again. I want to repeat it. Very good. Um, we have, in, especially in the West, a, a way of dividing the world into two parts: the ideal parts, the world of ideas, and the world that's that's real. And what Thakur Maharaj is telling us is that, according to Bhakti, when we approach the ideal, when we approach divine love, when we're becoming more familiar with, intimate with divine love, then we're actually becoming closer to reality. This is what reality is. Yes. Very. Nice. It's the only thing I know. Beautiful. Uh, Now, now Hegel makes sense to me too. Hegel, he's a philosopher, German philosopher, and Uda spent 15 years writing a book about his teachings, and it was mentioned in this book about ideal and real. The ideal, this highest love for God, is actually the real thing. It's not. It's not only idea. It's actually real. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. मंदवार तेगों गोरंगा 
this is your day to share something. Do something. <laughs> no, good. I remember what uh, Gopinath uh, was reading about the prayer of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur somewhere in the middle of the text and he is praying uh, that he wants to serve all those great personalities who are in close connection with Radharani. So we can see also in his book Sharanagati in three songs actually he is this revealing, discovering his uh, Manjari Swarup and he is showing us how to do in the practice and first to leave Purusha Abhiman. This is his first instruction yeah. actually. To leave this yeah identification I am a man or maybe we can say also I am a woman I am controller I am just a small girl Radhika servant and I need to serve my superior Saki wow. I will make some service make a garland and other things and first offer to her and she will offer to Radha and Krishna yeah. so in his book Sharanagati he is already is speaking very very openly about this Manjari Bhav especially in these yeah. three poems yeah. yeah. And rem <laughs> reminds me also on Raguna Das Goswami in how I have this book here, Raj Vilasa Stava. And in one verse, verse 40, he is praying to Radharani's maid servants. And wow. in his prayer, I will read you, Gurudev, now. He is explaining their essence of emotions. What makes them Rat Manjaris? Wow. Yes, Gurudev. I worship Sri Radha's beloved maid servants uh -huh. who are like dead no one. when they don't see her mm. for even a moment. I worship Sri Radha's beloved maid servants who are like dead when they don't see her for even a moment <coughs> who consider themselves to be most happy when Sri Radha is happy Yeah. who are very soft-hearted <clears throat> and who have performed so many pious activities. I will read one more time. Wow. I worship Sri Radha's beloved Maid servants who are like dead when they don't see her even for a moment, who consider themselves to be most happy when Sri Radha is happy. Uh -huh. 
and who are very soft-hearted and who have performed so many pious activities. Should I continue, Gurudev? Wow, wow. Or wow. you want to say? Or no, 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 no. In this world, so. yes. In this world, Sripad Raghunatha praises the most intimate friends of Srimati Radharani. Before this, all of Sri Radha's girlfriends and maidservants have been praised. But it seems that there is special reason why they have been praised here with the words Praneshwari Preshta Gana. First of all, these beloveds of Shirada are defined as follows. When they don't see Shirada for even a moment, they are almost like a death. Wow. Wow. In mm -hmm. his Vrindavana Mahimamrita, Sripad Prabhupada Saraswati has written about Sri Radha's maid servants or manjaris. Maid servant feels like dying when she is separated from her Ishwari's lotus feet for even a moment. She is staying by her lotus feet day and night. What more can I say? When Srimati enjoys with her lover in the Kuncha, she, she sits her maid servant on the bed or covers her with the sheets. Therefore, if they don't see their Ishwari even for a moment, they are like that. Their forms embody devotional service. And if they are deprived of that devotional service, mm. it is as if they lose their lives. In past, present, or a future, She doesn't covet anything else but Radha's lotus feet. And she is always immersed in a boundless ocean of blissful love for her. Even in her dreams, she doesn't know anything else but Sri Radha's lotus feet and she manjari is like a river that sweetly runs towards 
the ocean of Sri Radha. Following these quotations, we assume that the Manjaris, whose very hearts are dedicated to Sri Radha, are indicated very clearly in these words. When Sri Radha is happy, they are happy. Just as the buds, manjaris, and fresh sprouts automatically blossom, when a vine is sprinkled, the manjaris or maid servants of Sri Radha blossom up with great bliss when the Radha vine is sprinkled by the nectar of Sri Mohan's nectarian pastimes. Sri Radha's happiness and distress is reflected on them as if they are mirrors. They are just like mirrors. When tears are falling from your eyes, they also fall from their eyes. When Radhika have goose pimples in her body, Manjaris also have them. And when Radhika laugh, they also laugh. And when she is morose, they are also sad. In Sri Govinda Lilamrita, it is described how amazing when Mukunda touches Radhika, her girlfriend's cry of ecstasy and their bodies tremble, perspire and are studded with the goose pimples. And when Krishna blissfully drinks the honey of Radhika's lips by kissing her, <coughs> then they all become mad. <laughs> Even after long search, one cannot find any happiness comparable to the happiness of Manjaris feel when they behold the sweetness of Shishi Radha Mohana's amorous pastimes through the windows of the Kunja. The maid servants can experience Sri Radharani's happiness more than others. And finally, it is said I worship Praneshwari Sri Radha's most beloved ones who have very soft hearts and who have performed many pious activities. Because Sri Radha's maid servants show the limit of selfishness, they are soft-hearted like no one else 
in the circle of all Sakis. They are in name Manjari and they are in nature also Manjari. But they will never allow the bumblebee to enjoy them. Just as the buds increase, the bees thirst for the flowers. Similarly, the manjari buds always increase Madhusudana's thirst for the flower-like Sri Radha. Wow. Mm -hmm. More, more, more. <laughs> Here, they have been called Krita Punya Punja. Girls who have performed many pious acts or activities. But there is no kind of pious merit that can bring about the good fortune of attaining the service of Shishi Radha Mohana. Yeah. Shiva Jiva Goswami has written in his Lagutoshana Tika. And he said, she, Shukamuni, repeatedly praised the covered boys who enjoyed with Krishna as being more pious than the previously mentioned Gyanis. The devotees with reverential service attitude. But this is just the customary saying. Actually, there is another meaning to the word punya or pious merit, and that is charu or a chanting. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, again. This is just the customary saying which Shukamuni is speaking about pious activities which. Uh, covered boys got to be close with Krishna. But actually there is another meaning to the word punya, pious merit, and that is charu, or enchanting. To be enchanted is already merit of pious activities from many, many lives. Yeah. And this enchant ability to, uh, to be enchanted brings more and more, more and more samskaras. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay, Gurudev? Wonderful. Must this is to understand. Other is no activities in the Ajahn is not good. Name is the real past. Well. I, I was in Austria, and I see one Christian Mataji, 78 year old, and she is always with rosary. Rosary, Christian rosary. And I can say you, I was surprised to meet her, and she has all words is divine talk. 
So this chanting of name in every every place is there. Who want to be pious activities, they pray. They pray. You see, Christians, Muslims, the the real realization person, they always try to do the chanting thing. And this is the really pious activity for inner development. Outer development is a ritual practice and body work to you do. But it's not coming. Whole life do an old age suffering and not realization comes. But the bhajan, inner realization comes to you. And it's really, it is, is a practical realization. Hmm? Practical. Your test will grow, you will stand. You cannot live without that. In beginning, like a chariot of the ocean, churning of the ocean, poison is coming. Means first you poison will come when you start chanting, poison will come. Then we run away. If you not run away, then many good things are coming. But the Guru is catching that poison. Yes. So Guru is a Sharanagati is important that he any wheat coming or poison coming, he see and he remove because he wants to go. He must see he wants to go. So wheat will come with seed plant and the poison will also come. Then if you, demoniac nature is there, then we will take this good thing. But if you take this, the demons take the elephant, take the horses, <laughs> many things they want to take it, fighting for that. Devta take Kalpata, which is a plant, what I will do. <laughs> like this. So our nature, it decides which way to go. My chanting is growing. I will select the right thing for my life. Chariot ocean is very, very practical realization. And when chanting, it happens like that. And when we are satisfied for that, then our development is stopped. And when we are not satisfied, then we grow more and more. Read more, more, more. Sorry, six thirty is done. <laughs> Ten minutes more. Lorana uh, Solar, you have to open your microphone again. Microphone is closed. Oh yeah. Okay, I will do it fast. Mm. So the point is that Manjaris are called here Krita Punya Punja. So the word Krita also means pastimes. Wow. <laughs> In other words, I said, uh, this is the Sanskrit. What I understand behind meanings are there. 
Yeah. As for your development and realization, you relate like that. Yes. Yeah. In other words, Sri Krishna is completely controlled by those who can perform such a chanting pastimes with him. And Majaris have been called Krita, Punya, Punja, because they are so fixed in service attitude towards Yugala. And they have such beautiful characters because they are free from even the slightest fragrance of personal desire. And Raghunath is finishing and saying, I worship Sri Radha's most beloved maidservants who almost, who almost die in a fire of separation when they don't see her even for a moment and who are beside themselves of ecstasy when Sri Radha is happy. What a pow wonderful, pious activities they have performed. This is the end. Well, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gopinath, for everything. Our, our dear <coughs> Raghunath Bhaiya, has actually had the fortune to personally have darshan of Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar Maharaj. So, can I invite him to say something? Yeah, we want to visit. Oh yeah, where, where to start or where to end is very difficult to describe such a personality. So I just wanted to start with something very personal. Because when we arrived in this ashram in 1986, The first thing he was asking is, did you take prasadam? Are you okay? Have you everything? Will you sleep? Is everything okay? You need something? Or very personal, incredible, incredibly personal how he treated us from the first moment. We didn't even, the first time I met him. And uh, he was... He was sitting in a chair, and then he invited us, and we went up running, because we took a quick shower, went up running, and um, and then I never forget that. He said, that's a teaching for, for everybody and for, for the whole world and for the whole universe. It is so hard capturing when he said, he was looking at us. There was Tipurari Swami, I remember. There was Chivanuga from Germany, a few others. And he was looking at us and he was asking, you know what belongs to you? Like this. You know what belongs to you? And we were thinking, my God, what we probably say now? <laughs> Nobody says nothing. And then he said, close your eyes. And then you see what belongs to you. This is very deep. Very deep, very deep. We are proprietor of nothing. Only that I remember this like it would have been yesterday. And this also marked my life, actually, because that was in 86. And... Uh, 
1988, he left the world. And it was the last, actually, we got one of the last Dacha in 87. And then he was also welcoming us again. And I had a very nice service. I could collect the tripe banana leaves for heating up the water that he could take a shower. And he was living so simply, you cannot imagine, incredibly simply. He was not, even his clothes, he was well known in Navadvip, that he was dressed very badly. Like he didn't take any care for his, for outer things, for external things. And then he was, he was telling us about the chanting of the Mahamantra. And he said, when you chant the Mahamantra, you must meditate on an elephant. How are you were thinking, what? <laughs> Why on an elephant? And then he said, you know what happens? When an elephant walks, and he goes from one point to the other. He goes straight. And they can come in from the side, dogs and whatever animals, and try to deviate him. They bark. They, they try to frighten him, the elephant. And the elephant is going straight to his destiny. That why also... It is always mentioned the gate of an elephant when, when we speak about Radharani because she goes right to a destiny. Oh. No, Radha goes right to Mohan all the time. <coughs> That's why the gate of an elephant. Nobody can disturb anything. When we are chanting the Ma Mantra and meditating on that, because there might come, you know, different ideas from the mind trying to disturb, but when you are on that meditation, you go straight from one point to the other. And uh, this was Silasida Maharaj's teaching all the time. Beautiful. And what he also said is, I never forget that, he said, the highest value, the highest value in spiritual life is modesty. Modesty, simplicity, with other word. Yeah, simplicity. That is the highest thing you can do. And then he connected it to the word, to the verse, Trinada Bisunichina, Tarora Pisa Hishna, Amanina Manadina, Kitanya Sidahari. And actually, for me, for me personally, he was the personification of this verse. So much humility, so much tolerance, so much everybody respecting, and he didn't want any respect for himself. Yeah. Not one thing. He didn't want, he didn't thought about himself even. And then Kitanya Sadahari, that's why we always saw him chanting. He all the time was chanting. Every time you came there, he had his chapa in his hand. And then he always said, I remember this, he was telling something. And then he said, Nikai, 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 Nikai. And then it was silence for quite a moment. And then he started again to speak. And then again, Nikai, Nikai, Nikai. Again, silent. And it's over here. So now I can feel him a lot more than before. Because now, through the mercy of our dear Gurudev and the Rala Mohan and all of you, that came, that, that is a lot. At that time, I just started with spiritual life, and I'm still starting anyway. But uh, at that time, it was very, very hard capturing already for me. And uh, anyway, I could speak so much about, I could glorify him all the time till. Day after day, maybe now the, now the time is a little short. We come to the to the final. And one more thing I wanted to tell and share with you about him is that he never, never spoke one bad word about anybody. He never quarreled. He never was 
doing something which you say, wow, he never discussed, like many of Gaudi Amat came and they wanted to discuss. No, never, he never discussed, never. I was many times, I saw Sila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj at that time and they had also a nice relation. And Sila Prabhupada was there once. I, 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 at that time I was not, but they told me, they, they gave me that, that in, input. And then he, they were speaking, Sila Prabhupada and him. And then they were laughing and laughing and laughing, both, all a big smile on their faces. They were looking at each other, big smile on the face, and one decided, and what did you talk about? What did you talk If I would tell you this, you all would faint. <laughs> he said, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. 